Hey, good morning everyone out there. I just want to do a little video here about sinner's prayer because somebody asked me yesterday and it's coming up again and again. What about the sinner's prayer? And uh, how to answer people who are using the sinner's prayer. First, when I say the sinner's prayer, that is actually something quite new. It's, it's, it's only the last 100 years. Before that, nobody knew about what we call today the sinner's prayer. And the sinner's prayer talk about Romans 10, uh, 9. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. That small text, those verses there in Romans 10 have been uh, taken out of context and have been today uh, become something magical. If you do this, if you pray this and do this, you shall be saved. And, and there's many ways to look at this. Uh, first thing, our problem is the whole way we understand the gospel today, that we are preaching the gospel in a way that is all about getting people safe here now. Like almost we get stressful. Like, hey, you have to do it here, now, right now, right in that moment, here, do it, pray, pray this prayer, or even get baptized right now, right now. Relax. <laughs> God put people on earth here to seek him and find him. If we stress people into the kingdom, they will receive it now and throw it away tomorrow. We need to give time for true repentance. We need to get, give time for people to hear the word. And also in Romans, we read that, that, that how can they hear if somebody is not preaching? How can they hear if somebody is not sinned? And he's saying that the faith is coming by hearing. So they need time to hear. It needs time to go down in the heart for them to have a true repentance. And therefore also be able to be baptized if it is. But when we talk about the sinner's prayer, the sinner's prayer has become something stressful. You have to pray this prayer. And if you pray this prayer, you are saved. Of course, you have to mean it. You have to be sincere. But just because people mean it and sincere don't mean anything. <laughs> because I can say to somebody, do you want to go to hell? No, of course not. Do you, do you mean it? You mean you are sincere that you don't want to go to hell? Yeah, I am. I don't want to go to hell. And you mean it by your whole heart? Yes, I mean it. Okay, if you pray this prayer, then you are not going to hell. Then we have people who are very, very sincere in their heart and they pray this prayer. They are sincere in what? Sincere in that they don't want to go to hell. But not sincere in, do they want to follow Christ? And that is the thing, is, is how we put it off. The early church did not preach a gospel of salvation like the main focus. They were preaching a gospel like follow Christ as the main focus. Yes, a fruit of following Christ is salvation, is that you're not going to hell. But, and, and we had to understand how the early church was doing and, and the problem with what we're doing today. I believe, of course, if somebody are sincere in following Christ, who have understood their sin, who want to turn away from their sin, who want to make Jesus Lord, and that mean, Lord, Lord, you're my Lord, I do what you tell me to do. Because another place Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you don't say, do what I do? And I say, do what I say. So, so if somebody really sincere in their heart, if somebody wants to follow Christ, to pray a prayer is good. It's not a problem to say, Jesus, I ask you, forgive me my sins. And, and pray what somebody would call sinner's prayer. I don't have any problem with it. I think that is fine. The problem is if, if we say there, now you are born again. You just ask this into your heart and you are born again. Then we have big problems because that is not biblical. That is wrong. Um, so if we look at the sinner's prayer, let, let's look at it. Romans 10, 9. First thing, Romans 10, 9 is... <laughs> It's written in, we always need to read text in context. Romans 10 is written to the church in Rome. It's written to already born again believers who have 
already repented, make Jesus Lord, who have got baptized to Jesus Christ and who have received the Holy Spirit. In the same letter to Romans, short time before, in chapter 6, Paul is saying, don't you remember when you got baptized? In, in, in chapter 8, he talks about when you receive the Spirit, now walk by the Spirit. So he's talking about, he's talking to somebody who have already repented, made Jesus Lord, got baptized in water and received the Holy Spirit. And to those already believers, he in context are saying, if you believe, or go on believing, that is how it's written, and confess, go on confessing, Jesus as Lord, you shall one day get saved. This is how you should understand Romans 10, 9. So the right context of that verse is to you, to me, who are believers, who are born again. If we go on believing, go on confessing Jesus as Lord, we shall one day be saved. Because the one who keep on to the end shall be saved. And this is the context of it. But now we take one verse out of context and then do, 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 we go out to sinners who have not heard the full gospel about repentance, who don't know about the cross and what Jesus did, he, who don't know anything about making him Lord, who don't know anything about the baptism and the Holy Spirit. And then we say to them, hi guys, if you pray this prayer, you shall one day be saved. That is off, that is wrong. So uh, no matter how you look at it, it's not biblical to, to, to use the sinner's prayer the way we do it today. It's not historian, uh, like something we have long time, it's maybe 100 years or something. They didn't do that two, three, four hundred years ago. They didn't know about the sinner's prayer. It's something that is quite new. Another thing, try to go to the book of Acts. When Peter stood up at Pentecost and they asked, what shall we do? He did not say, bow your head everyone and pray this prayer after me. Nobody in the book of Acts used the sinner's prayer. Everyone in the book of Acts used baptism, repentance. Everyone in the book of Acts who want to not just get saved and go into heaven, but want to follow Christ, they need to repent, turn away from their sins. There we talk about a new heart. Then they should get baptized for the wasn't aware of sins. They talk about being saved from our sin, from our past, being saved from, from all the things we are bound to because the one who do sin become a slave to sin. So we get saved from that body who was under sin and death so we can now walk the new life in Christ. And then we receive the Holy Spirit, the power to walk this new life. And this is what we see in the book of Acts, how the early church was preaching the gospel. They never used the sinner's prayer, never, not one time they did it like this like we are doing today but they always every time preach a gospel where there was like there's water can i get baptized okay you understood the gospel let's go down and baptize you at that part i also want to say don't baptize too fast i see so many people who baptize too fast when jesus said in matthew 28 go make disciples baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything i have commanded you and teaching them everything I've commanded them. A, baptizing them. B, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded. If people don't want to do B, don't let them do A. Don't baptize people who are not ready to be taught afterward to obey everything Jesus has commanded. And I think this is the problem. I see people who take the sinner's prayer and make it magical. So, like if you pray this one prayer, you are safe and everything is good. And what is the fruit? We, we know a tree by the fruit. The fruit for many, many, many thousands, many people who have prayed the sinner's prayer is no fruit. The fruit is the prayer, prayer, and they continue living in sin afterward. There is no transformation. The same fruit we can see in baptism in water, and it's so sad. I know people who got baptized in water, and afterwards, 
the people baptized them like, hey, okay, are you ready? Now we are going to teach you how to obey Jesus. No, 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 I, I don't want that. I just wanted to get baptized in water. Wrong. <laughs> Sorry, if, if somebody don't want to be teach, uh, taught afterwards, Jesus' word and what it is to obey Jesus, if they don't want to do B, don't give them A. Don't baptize them. <laughs> the, the, the sign that people are ready to get baptized is that they have a repentance heart, but also that they are listening and wanted to be taught the word of God and want to follow Jesus afterwards. But, but we can easily get people baptized. Just say, hey, if you want to go to heaven, do you want to go to heaven? Yes. Are you sincere and go that you want to go to heaven and don't want to go to hell? Yes, I'm really sincere. Okay, let's baptize you. <laughs> and somehow the baptism become like a new sinner's prayer. So I just want to say the biblical part is baptism, correct? It is repentance, baptism, Holy Spirit. That is the response the early church gave on the gospel. But that was in context of, I want to follow Christ. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life and obey his word. And if we don't obey his word, then Jesus will say, why, don't you, why do you call me Lord, Lord, if you don't do what I say? Luke 6, 46. So, non-biblical response is sinner's prayer. Pray this prayer and you go to heaven. But praying a prayer is good. I pray with people. It's beautiful. But if the really prayer, prayer of Jesus, I confess you as Lord, then they listen to his word. And what are they doing? They are repenting. They are getting baptized. And they are receiving the Holy Spirit. Okay, it was just a little about the sinner's prayer and a little about baptism. So the sinner's prayer, every time you see it, every time you see somebody or, or written in a place, us say why why do you use the sinner's prayer why 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 is it like that it's not wrong to pray with people but to say do you want to go to heaven and then pray this prayer this is wrong it's not biblical try to see the book of Acts. try to see the early church how they were preaching and what response they got when they were preaching the gospel hope that helped god bless you bye bye